welcome to another episode of the Car Girl Show. My name is Jesse Kessel, and this is my co-host, Janice Showers. It's and Janice Showers. Today we are so excited <laughs> that we have one of the fanners uh, from Women in Automotive, Jody Devere. Jody, say hello. Hi, Jody. Hi, everyone. Thanks for having me. We are so happy to have you on the show. Um, so we want to ask you a few questions about the organization, about yourself, just so that the audience uh, that's watching right now, maybe some of them aren't familiar. Um, so who tell- hasn't heard of Ask Patty? Ask pa- yeah. Okay. I mean, Joni is one of And the- her name is not Patty. That was <laughs> one of the founding women in automotive. She has uh, certainly paved the way uh, for a lot of women. I've been a big fan for many years. Uh, of Jody, so I, we are so excited to be going to Orlando, and we're actually yes. going to get to meet Jody and go to the conference. Yep, um, and happening end of June. So, Jody, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got started in automotive. It's a great question. Um, I was actually doing some consulting after I had sold a high technology business back in two thousand. And I always say the reason you start a business is that you see a problem that no one is solving. And as I was consulting, many of my clients were automotive industry clients. Some of them, this was in the early days when CRM and lead providers were just getting online, you know, sort of the the beginning times of when AutoTrader and Cars.com and all those things started to happen, you know. Um, and I really saw a big disconnect between who was really buying the car and the automotive industry, which is women, right? Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Excuse me. <laughs> See, not before. <clears throat> and so um, basically, I thought in my mind that it would be a great to have a place to really have women get a voice. And of course, This was back in 2005 and 2006 when the blogosphere was really giving women uh, a platform to speak their mind to brands and and to gather in groups. And the timing of it was really um, right. Who knew? And and Ask Patty really took off. And once the automotive advice really got going, we, um, you know, I had plans to develop a certification program for automotive dealers called the Certified Female Friendly Program, where we would learn together how to communicate better, not only um, on the showroom floor, but also in the way they market and advertise. And of course, it's just grown and grown since then. In fact, on the 21st was Ask Patty's 13th birthday. So I am technically in my 14th year. We're at oh, uh, wow. Patty's a teenager yeah, now. Ask Patty, <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So tell us now how the conference came about and how many years have you been doing the conference now? So the conference is in its fifth year and it really was an outgrowth of Ask Patty. Um, you know, I ha- had always had a panel of automotive expert women. And part of the reason I did that was to give women a platform to be known as experts and authorities in automotive as women and to help them build their careers. So um, Ask Patty had a kind of a three-pronged approach to help consumer women, elevate women. And also I was uh, very involved in the Women's Automotive Association International, which I was the president and the CEO with Lorraine Schultz, who really is the woman who started the very first women's organization in automotive uh, about 25 years ago. She has since, uh, she passed away last June during the conference. I like to honor her by saying that. Mm -hmm. And all of us uh, on the board knew her, loved her, were involved with her. And it was always sort of a vision of having a woman's conference and getting more traction in the industry about some of the challenges we face. And um, and so um, about six years ago, uh, six of us sat down in Chicago, actually, and talked about developing it. We had done a couple of trials by doing um, a side-by-side event with some other uh, conferences. And we, we really saw that this was going to work and, and held our first conference. 
um, in 2014. And oh. it was a huge, in 2015, actually, 15, okay. 16, 17, 18, still, yeah. Wow, in 2015, it's, still, it's still fairly new. Still young. It was a huge success. Uh, we had over 300 attend our very first conference in Orlando. And of course, we've expanded. We're not just doing one conference a year. Um, some years we've done an East yeah. Coast, West Coast. And we do a lot of one day or one and a half day events uh, in conjunction with auto shows and other industry events like Digital Dealer, Driving Sales, mm -hmm. uh, NADA. You recently um, did one in New York City. We did New one York in New auto York. Show. We did one in Chicago. Yeah. Uh, we did one in Los Angeles last November. And so we and we call those our regional events and we're, and we're happy to do more. Um, and, and I know you're in Canada. We would love to do a yeah, regional event. Yeah, we'd love to have Toronto. you in Toronto. Absolutely. Toronto. Yeah. yeah. And There's definitely it, a market here. Yeah. I'd, I'd like, you know, the mission of the women in automotive is, um, really to have those transparent discussions about the challenges that face our industry. Uh, this is a, a, a widely known fact that only 26.2% of all employees in, employed in all roles in automotive, that's including, including in manufacturing and in, you know, yeah. aftermarket are women. And when you start talking about the dealership, those percents go way down, down. and then really way down uh, when you're talking about leadership positions. Now, yep. it has grown, but the growth rate is very slow. Minimal. Dismal. And and so we don't go at it, at, you know, that we're on a big uh, campaign because it's the right thing to do. We're actually on a campaign because it is the profitable thing to do. And here's why. Yeah. Because women make more than 50% of car buying decisions and 73% of service decisions. And so it seems to be very logical that there would be more gender parity. Um, and also, and I want to underline this. In some ways, uh, the automotive industry has grown up to be very male dominant and testosterone laden. And for many years, uh, women didn't think of it as a career for them. They came by accident. And so we want to make this on purpose. In other words, let's let all yeah. women know that working in automotive is profitable. Uh, they're exciting careers and they're um, not all careers that are just working in sales um, or service at a dealership. There's marketing careers, there's engineering careers. Um, there are so many different opportunities. And I don't think that young women uh, today are being, it's not like the school counselors are sitting down young women. No, and I would agree with you. It's not right. on their radar. It's not on their radar. A hundred percent. I agree with you. They're not looking at it. Maybe we're starting to see a trickle of young women with the marketing. As you suggested, mm -hmm. that's certainly a position that I'm seeing mm -hmm. more of, but, but oh. and it, it's still very much if they are going to be working at a, a dealership, it's kind of by accident, like you said. Yeah. I know a lot of people, we, women we have that I know. the same experience. Yeah, a lot of yeah. women that I've spoken to in the industry, you ask them, yeah. you know, how they came about working at the dealership, and it's it's always by accident, or how they got into sales. It was like, well, well, I was originally a receptionist, or I was originally in customer yeah. service, and, yeah. you know, their their role grew from there into sales or F&I. So this is one of the missions of the show, one of the goals? Yes, and so we, um, as oh, women, um, it, it's sort of like you need to join our mission. That When you come to the conference, you'll find out it, there's a lot of calls to action because no matter what we talk about at the conference or what you learn or learn from companies and or individuals who are making changes, because really it's what you do after the conference that's going to make a difference. That's yeah. right. right. It's all it's all about action. What the takeaways. So, so Jody, tell me, as someone, let's say, that has never attended the conference, what can you what can they expect by by going? So the conference is um, uh, two and it's like two and a half days. And the the theme this year is innovation and what's next, meaning what can we, what are the next steps that we can take to innovate a, a, along our mission? Uh, of attracting, uh, hiring, uh, and developing more women in our industry, and of course, developing more women leaders and strategies that our industry can improve on marketing, advertising, and selling to consumer women. It goes hand in hand. That yeah. is the main thing. 
what are uh, you're going to learn about best practice in in human resources management, personal development, how you can develop your own career from a personal point of view. It could be anything from personal branding to uh, how to manage your finances. We're going to have a great speaker on, on, you know, when you make all those oodles of money and many people do in automotive, uh, how do you manage those, that, those assets and make them work for you, right? Great. We also have dealership strategies. Uh, what dealerships can do. Uh, we also have marketing and selling to women again. And then our keynotes, of course, we have some inspiration and thought leadership on trends in our industry as they relate to technology that could be utilized or data that could be utilized to help you along these lines. Uh, a lot of industry experts. I'm very proud of what we do from an educational point of view because you will not really hear a lot talked about on these topics at other automotive industry conferences. It's quite specialized. Uh, and we do have fun too. Uh, we have a couple of cocktail parties. And the other thing I think we do an excellent <laughs> job at the, at the conference, which is what everyone wants to do, is meet and network uh, with the right yeah. people. Yeah. So we have pre-conference networking um, and we have uh, speed networking. Uh, during, we also um, in the evenings um, arrange to have tables of 10 that can sign up to go to dinner together. It, it's a very interactive environment that gives you a lot of opportunities, even the way we work with our sponsors uh, so that they get a lot of time, a uh, one-on-one -on -one time uh, with the attendees. And we're expecting around 400, um, maybe more. We'll see. Uh, so. I think that gives you a good flavor, but really our mission, uh, all of the topics and speakers are giving their uh, case studies or insights and how they got it right along the, those lines or things that you could use from a technology point of view to leverage opportunities around hiring and retaining and attracting more women mm -hmm. um, and also developing great marketing and advertising strategies that resonate better with women. I think a lot of our dealers will like to hear about how to hire more women because I hear that from dealers. Yeah, we do get that's something you that know, we do get how, asked. They yeah. ask us, how do I how do I hire more women? How do I get somebody like you? I mean, how we get offered jobs daily when we go into dealerships. <laughs> Jesse and I were out and they say, Can I can I just clone you? How do I get more women? So it, it women in automotive is still a specialty, it's still a real niche. Yeah. It seems even in Canada, uh, but any dealer who has a woman who has stayed and been successful is always looking for more. So right. I think that's something that if they could get that at the conference, that would be very beneficial. Yeah. yeah. Well, How do we develop that, that talent? For sure. Yeah. And we have, and, we, and there are tools, uh, like one of our sponsors, PCS Global has, uh, you know, I'm sure you've taken some of those tests over the years, the personality test. Yeah that will help uh, dealerships determine the best profile. Uh, and you know, how, you know, it's one thing to hire a woman. I'm, I'm gonna tell you another stat that's rather shocking. That NADA data states that of women hired in sales, there's a 90% turnover the first year. Yes, no. we heard that, we did hear <laughs> that the other week. This stat makes us cry, Jody. Yeah. we hate this stat, we hate so, it. I, I could, okay. I mean, I can believe it, but I've I can't believe it. I've seen it and it breaks my heart. I mean, yeah. I've had women call me crying from dealerships, call me crying and say, I'm leaving today, I'm quitting today. And I, right. I support a lot of women in automotive and I tell them, hang in there. Just hang in there one more day, put up with it. <laughs> so maybe the hiring, and, 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 and I really look at this very organically and holistically. And of course, this is my area of expertise that when a dealer calls you and says, how do I hire more women? Your reply should be, well, it's not just about hiring. Them. It's about keeping you need them. to learn how yeah. to train right. and develop, mentor, right. nurture them. Yeah. Because if they just think, uh, they're just going to sure. hire women with no expertise on how to build a culture right. around developing women in an organization if they've never done that. The, the and women and it lie. starts really, I mean, from orientation to how yeah. you integrate them to the, the basics, the culture that we they're walking into. We went to a into. conference about, in, about um, including and engaging your employees. Yeah. <clears throat> Something that stood out for me, as, as simple as it sounds, when the employee first starts about where to park 
where do they park their vehicle? That can be, and we all know in a car dealership, parking is at a premium. <laughs> it yes. can be frustrating. Where do you put your car? Right. And so that even just getting, you know, frustrated or discombobulated before you even come into the showroom because you don't know where to park. It's simple as that sounds, but it's starting your day with helping them know where to park, know where to go, um, you know, just knowing the rules of engagement when you first start. Yeah, right. and it, right now it seems to be more of a sink or swim. <laughs> you gotta just get thrown well, yeah. in there. Sink or and swim. Let's, it's let's a good. Let's face it. You know, dealers still not all dealers, but um, not all. You know, I do a lot of in-house training around this. And if if women don't want to shop there, why would they want to work there? And so there's some. You know, before they run off and hire a bunch of women, they need to take a look a long look. And these are things that we. Um, provide in the conference and even after the conference uh, a lot of companies come with resources to help dealers um, it, you know as our sponsors including myself to help them develop the environment and the best practices and human resources and the the tools and skills in including uh, compliance on sexual harassment or harassment um, best practices on diversity. We're going to hear from Microsoft on that. It's he's got a fabulous. Um, they're one of our sponsors. A fabulous presentation on that, and learn from the winners. So we bring a lot of companies who are getting that right, so that you who can. Who does it well? I mean, isn't that how you learn? Yes. Let's learn from people who are getting it right, and they'll provide how they did it and what they're doing. Um, uh, one I'd like to mention because they've been a sponsor for several years is uh, Hyundai. Uh, surprisingly, they have an, an excellent internal women's organization, and it's yeah. been growing and growing. And we're going to hear a little bit more about what they've done in the last year to support women and develop yeah. more women I've leaders. Been, I've been following them here in Canada and in in Markham, um, where Hyundai uh, Hyundai Canada's head, head office. office is. Yeah. They have uh, been doing some work <laughs> there uh, with women, and I love it. Love to see it. It's it's needed. So yay, yeah. Hyundai. Yeah. Right. And, and and I think that th that we're trying, I know this sounds kind of weird, but we really collect companies that are getting things right and somewhat invite them to come and share their story because they're probably unaware that, that they're what they're doing is unique to the industry, their yeah. successes. And yeah. so it's really fun to, um, I, I want to share a little story. Um, although they're not going to come to this conference, I'm hoping to get them at one of our uh, soon events, maybe in LA, but Mitsubishi, which is a pretty small auto brand, has three women ex executives on their team. Yeah. Who knew? And the, and their CEO created that. In other words, it was something that he made a decision to make happen, which is usually how it has to happen. Yeah. And so I really, I all of the companies who are thoughtfully uh, making decisions, because it doesn't happen by accident, for sure. It has to be a conscious decision to uh, develop gender parity and for that matter to, de to develop a diverse organization that reflects the consumers that you're serving in your local market. Right on. <laughs> we love it. Right on. Right on. <laughs> Yay. All good You're reasons. Speaking our language. All we reasons to go. But I mean, what I'm really looking forward to is being in the same room with like minded women yeah. uh, who because, get it. Who just get it. <laughs> right? Who just where we're get it. From. Exactly. Yeah. And hopefully they rub off on us. <laughs> yeah. oh, and I love what? the word that you use, you know, to elevate. To yeah. elevate one another, you yeah. know, instead of competing yeah. or and challenging. And we grow by like, lifting others. We exactly. grow by helping others. Rise together. It's, yeah. It's so very with, uh, energizing, actually. And, um, I, you know, I'm not going to tell you how old I am, but I have a, a nearly 20-year-old granddaughter. And I've done a lot of conference work over my career, you know, but even bigger than this. And I can tell you, when you put on a conference, usually you're not enjoying it because you're so into the details. This conference, there are many times even I stop in the middle and feel like I'm floating about two feet off the ground. Cool. It's very hard to explain the energy when you get like-minded individuals empowered in a situation like this and armed to go back and really make a difference in their workplace. <laughs> um, 
because it's going to happen incrementally. No one's going to just raise their hand and go, okay, we're fixing the problem. It's, yeah. it's too complicated, right. yeah, but we each take a piece of this. And when you join, we feel like we're, when we say we're on a mission, join our mission. Uh, and we will empower you to go out and make a difference uh, and help and support you. And uh, it's very exciting work we're doing, I think. I love it. It is, it is complicated. And every company, every major brand needs to get behind this. Yeah. I mean, this is, yeah. you yeah. know, Hello. far too long. <coughs> General Motors. Um, <laughs> all of them. General Absolutely Motors all of them. So, Jody, if they want to the, the, become sponsors, how do yeah. they get in touch? Yeah, how do they get involved? So uh, right now I will mention that Subaru, <laughs> General Motors, Porsche, uh, we'll have someone from Ford Motor Company. General Motors Women's Retail Network has sponsored every year, by the way. Awesome. Um, At they're the conference. very committed to our work. Yes. So the way that they get involved in a sponsor is to contact moi. Myself, Jay Devere at womeninautomotive.com. We'll put or all the contact can, details. Yeah, the... all the contact details will be listed. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And awesome. you can visit the Women in Automotive by going to uh, womeninautomotive.com. There you will see information about sponsorship, the, the agenda for the upcoming June conference, mm -hmm. registration information. I do want to mention that if you are a dealer principal, or if you are a general manager or a dealership executive, we will send you a complimentary ticket to this event valued at $695. U.S. So, dollars. That's that's about uh, about 1500 Canadian. <laughs> that's great, especially right now. Um, so just have them contact me for that. Again, Jay Devere at womeninautomotive.com. And for all others, we're also offering $100 off. You can use code 100 capital J U N when you register yeah. and you'll get a hundred dollars off your registration. Uh, we, we're really encouraging people to register soon because our room block is just about filled already. Although we're at a Disney resort, woohoo, Mickey mouse and Minnie mouse. <laughs> hey, and goofy. Wait. That's me. I'm more goofy. Um, there are several Disney resorts close by, uh, and it's just a lovely time of year to be in Orlando. Let me tell you, awesome. especially for yeah. us Canadians. Thank you, <laughs> Jody. For Canadians, because you're yeah. still thawing Look at out. Look the smile on her faces. <laughs> Jesse and I just can't wait to go to We're come so to Florida. Excited. We really are. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to be two feet off the ground too. I know when I go. <laughs> so you know, I've been fighting this battle a long time. People who yes. know me in Toronto, you know, I've been nearly 30 years in, in automotive and, and being a woman in automotive and promoting the, uh, uh, promoting the cause. And like you said, it's complicated. So it, it and it needs attention and it yeah. needs attention every day. So I'm excited to get some takeaways, some stuff that I can bring back to Toronto Same and with share me. with I my mean... dealers. Cause I get asked the question, how do I get more women? How do I keep women? in automotive yeah. so. and me on the advertising and marketing side i mean this is something we're dealing with is you know when we do video when we're doing facebook ads when we're doing campaigns like it's can't be general anymore you really have to be yeah specific. and i, I really so. like what you were talking about fixed operations 73 percent of service uh decisions made by women made by um, women yeah yeah that's that's a big number as well so yeah thank and you so thank much you, jody. jody we absolutely loved having you we cannot yeah. wait to, to meet come you to florida we in person Yay. florida uh yeah end of june so Those women in automotive again, the, are it starts on a sunday right it's, june it's sunday at, it, at the pre-sessions start at two the official conference kickoff is at 4 p.m and it ends on tuesday the 25th at five o'clock Awesome. So 23rd, awesome. 24th, 25th of June, get down to Florida. Yeah. And all the info will be uh, below or above this video somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so Thanks, much. Till okay. the next show, guys. Take care. Bye.